Hello and welcome to the CV Wizard demo. My name's Rich and I work for the I Can Be A team at the Mason Trust. Uh, I want to tell you about this new tool that we've had developed called the CV Wizard. Um, and as you may have guessed, this actually will take you through the steps of building a CV right from um, putting your name in and your contact details right the way through to selecting some colors and formatting and then publishing the CV at the end. Um, it allows you to publish it as a, C, as a PDF document, yeah, an electronic document in other words, which you can then um, attach to an email or an application form to go off to employers or to um, approach work experience organizations, that kind of thing. So this, um, this tool has been designed with mobile in mind. So it works really well on mobile phones and tablets as well as on desktops and laptop computers so um, you literally can put a cv together on the bus or on the train as long as you can remember a little bit about your education and your grades and that kind of thing so i just want to show you some of the key features so if you head to the i can be a home page and click on the cv wizard button from the top panel here or in the uh, navigation at the top if you just click on one of those that will launch it for you now you do need an i can be account to access these um, so if you don't have one already do head on over to i can be a org.uk use the sign up button to create yourself a free account and then once you've done that um, you can launch the cv builder and use those credentials to log in which is what i'm going to do here so um, let's start straight off and as you can see i'm managing two cvs here and you can manage any number of cvs in the system here you might want different cvs for different reasons and for different opportunities um, and you can give them different names to differentiate them um, if you want to remove them you can do that no problem i'll just delete one here as you can see and now we're down to one so we'll come back to that cv in a moment i just want to create a new cv to show you some of the the key features of the builder um, because one of the one of the key things it does is actually help you build a personal statement if you're not very good at writing those yourself um, it helps you list um, your education it helps you think about your skills and attributes so it really does prompt you for what to put in and you don't need to know very much um, to begin with it will ask you those questions so let's create a new cv um, it's going to ask me whether i'm a student or a job seeker i'm going to say student for this demo uh, and i'll tell you why this is important in a moment so i'm going to select student and i'm going to give the cv a name and just so I can differentiate it from other CVs I'm working on and away we go. So on this screen, you'll see there's eight main sections, these rectangles with the blue writing in. And you need to have a look at these, at least every single one, just to make sure that you are ready to publish a CV. Now, you don't have to do them in any particular order. You can do them in a, in a random order if you want to start where you want to. Um, but you do need to at least look at all of them as you go through them as a, as a minimum amount of information is put into them they will turn blue um, and once they are all blue you can then use the review and print button at the bottom to get your cv so you can see student is is blue because we selected that at the beginning now this decision here this allows us to forward you to relevant support information at the end of the process so if you're a student um, we can show you more information about your options how to write a cv from scratch all that sort of thing so that's what that selects does. I want to show you the personal statement first of all because this is something that a lot of people struggle with writing. I mean this really is an important part of the CV. It's where you get a chance to sell yourself to the employer, talk about what you want from any new roles or work experience that you might be applying for and, and what skills and attributes you have that that might be useful to to to, uh, to an employer. So it really is a way of, of of gaining an employer's attention by having a good personal statement. Now, some people are good at writing those themselves. And if you are, um, there's a button at the bottom here which says write or edit your own statement. And you'll see there's a text box here and you know what to do here. You just put in your put in your uh, personal statement as you as you type it out, as you think of it. If you're good at doing this sort of thing, if you know what sort of language to use, if you're well versed and practiced in these things, then that can be quite easy just to to start typing um, you'll see that there is a red underline which is my um, browser spell check telling me there's something wrong with those words do make sure you use any spell checking and grammar tools available to you and if you don't have any available to you then use the old method which is checking it through yourself talking to people getting them to read it through uh, make sure that you don't make any um, obvious spelling and grammar mistakes on your cv but i'm not going to type a cv from scratch because there are more useful things in this tool so we're going to delete that and i'm going to show you how to generate an example personal statement based on some choices so this is really good for people who struggle with um, sort of expressing um, uh, themselves in terms of you know telling an employer what they have to offer if you struggle with writing that or you just don't know how to start Start, then by all means use this system here so it says what type of opportunity you're looking for and you just need to select from these six options so we're going to say we're going to use this cv for work experience 
click on next and then it asks me what I want to prioritize in my personal statement so you can talk about all sorts of things but this will help flavor the statement so you've got skills experience and personal traits and I'm going to say I want this statement to be about my personal traits kind of more than anything else at least so if I click on next um, we're greeted with a, a sentence uh, with a blank in it and that's that is how this works it's quite simple um, you get some sentences you need to fill in the blanks and it will create a paragraph for you so what you can do to fill those blanks is um, select from one of our options here so I'm a responsible blank student you could say I'm a responsible college student for example or I'm a responsible dedicated student um, now we haven't been able to guess everything you might want to put in here obviously so these um, suggestions you need to view them also as examples because they just give you an idea of the type of thing that will fit you know whether one word will fit whether multiple words will fit and there's often um, different options that you could you could put in so you can select from these if you want to or of course if you can you can use the pick your own button and you can enter your own answer there um, to start with I'm just going to pick one of the pre-filled options I'm going to say I'm a year 10 student I'm going to click on next sentence which will actually show me the end of this sentence and it says currently studying blank now I could pop a, a, a couple of subjects in here if I wanted to um, but what I'm going to do is take the pre-selection again I'm going to save for my GCSEs and then I'm going to the next sentence uh, it says I want to get some work experience in now I have a look at the examples there's one that says the construction industry now I do want to write something a little bit like that um, but I've got a different industry in mind so what I'm going to do now is use the pick your own button and I'm going to say the music industry click done and you can see that's added in for us click next sentence I'm interested in a placement with uh, I could say a successful employer I could say your organization what I'm going to say is I'm going to enter my own I'm going to say a local music producer there we go that's put that in there for me I'm going to go on to the next sentence now which I think is the last one um, it says I work well in a team which I demonstrated with my involvement in so this is harking back to where you got some of your um, I suppose your traits from so there's one here that's close enough for what I want which is the Scout Association I am going to edit that but I'm going to use that as the as the selection if I click on the complete button now what you'll see is that's actually stitched all those sentences together into a paragraph which is a really good starting point for my personal statement now what you must do and what we highly strongly encourage you to do now is go through and customize this check it um, make sure it reflects you and who you are um, but it is a great example of sort of the roughly the length of personal statement that you might need um, it's a good example of the type of language which is commonly used in personal statements and that employers are used to looking at so it's a great example and a great place and as you see you've got a great starting point now so what you could do now is you could say right well I'm actually going to split this into a couple of paragraphs now uh, at least three I'm going to have three sort of small paragraphs I can see there's a low uh, an extra dot there which I'm going to remove um, other things you know you could say I want to change totally to very and you just literally type it in and where we we chose that scout association at the end because it was close enough we could say right we want to edit that now and what I actually wanted to just say was the guiding association or whatever it is um, and then obviously whatever tools and resources are available to you to help you write CVs you know including advice from teachers and parents and careers leads and all that sort of thing you need to apply that here but as you see that's that's produced a personal statement pretty quickly and got you up and running so that's one really useful tool I'll click on done and that's saved I want to show you a couple of others we won't go through all of these but other things that you might want to consider um, uh, or you do need to consider things like skills and attributes so these are not subjects they are not grades they are not uh, exam awards these are other personal attributes that you have that might be useful to an employer and it's always a good idea to list to bullet point a few of these um, to help them sort through CVs and and certainly if you get to an interview to know what some of your other skills are so basically the idea is you just pick the ones that apply to you here just pick a few don't pick too many don't pick too few so sort of five or six is probably a good number um, if you're not sure what some of these mean or you want to think about other things that you could put in we've got a sort of a little mini dictionary down here where you can look and say um, okay well that's what they've called it does that apply to me and you can read the black text here and see whether you think you want to use that word or any of these other words they're just there as examples um, of course you can add any other things in that you want to all of our sections allow you to add your own content so if I say add other skill 
I could put in other skill here. Obviously, I would define that, but for the example, I would put other skill and you'll see it's added on there for me. If I click next, it will show me now how it's going to bullet point those on my CV and then there's a text box. So wherever that you see a text box in the CV wizard, that's where we suggest that it's a good idea for you to provide a little bit more information. Um, so what I could use this text box for is to describe one or all of these particular skills, or I could put more of a summarizing statement in here. Um, I could say I have these uh, skills and more, for example. I'd want to write something better than that, but it's just to show you, you can put in a sentence or two there to, to sort of quantify or qualify what you've just bullet pointed above. So we click done there, that section is complete. Um, when you go to add your, um, your education, um, it basically asks you for what level of education and, and you need to add all the ones that apply. So if you're at high school, it will be under secondary, you know, colleges and sick forms, further education, and then higher education, obviously university and university level um, content and apprenticeships can be at all sorts of different levels. And whichever one you want to enter, it will ask you for all the relevant information, including dates, subjects, the name of the organisation, all that kind of thing. I'm just going to show you entering a high school quickly just to give you an idea. So you put in the name of the high school here, um, you put in your start date um, and your end date. And if you haven't finished yet, you just put in your projected end date. So pop that in. Well, once you've done that, um, the way that this works is it then shows you a load of level two, uh, in this case, GCSE qualifications that are fairly common. And this is to get you up and running really quickly. So what you have to do here is just delete all the ones that don't apply to you. And it's really quick. Um, just say, well, I haven't done any of these or I'm not studying for these. And this should give you a base list fairly quickly it should give you about half of your GCSEs um, and then what you need to do is use the add button to add in any of the others which you didn't see or if you accidentally deleted them you could add them back in make sure you put the subject and the uh, the type of uh, award there you can see I'm putting in music GCSE done and that's added it back on now once we confirm that it then just asks us to put in uh, the grades for those so if I have a look in the grade box we can select from a number of grade types you obviously need to put in the scale that applies to you so I'm going to put in grade fours for most of these and you'll see there's a little slider on the right and that slider is whether you have achieved that already whether you've passed them already or whether it is predicted and and you will have those marked in that way on your cv so uh, it will say whether you were awarded it or whether it's a predicted grade so that's a great way of doing predicted grades there which i'm just doing and i click done and done so we've done those three sections there i won't go through all the others some of them are fairly obvious what you need to put in and you are prompted at every opportunity to put in the right information one thing to note for students is that you you do need to fill in all of these sections but depending on where you are so if you're at high school you may not have any work history as such now normally if you're a job seeker this is where you put in previous employers um, but if you're at high school what you could put in here is previous work experience that you've had um, or if you've got any um, uh, experience with charities or volunteering or anything like that that might be a good thing to put in under work history um, so do consider that you do need to look at this section even if you don't add anything to it you need to have a look in it and click done because that will mark it blue so that is important to remember for students because you may not have a work history anyway so you can see we've done four of those now if I went through uh, it would take longer but we'd eventually fill all those up um, I'm going to go back to our original uh, CV now so if I pop back and go to this CV where I have actually completed all of those elements. Um, I'll just very quickly show you some of the other things. So hobbies and interests, we bullet pointed a few things that we're into outside of school, which is also really useful for an employer to know, especially from an interview perspective, gives, some, gives them something to talk about with you. So that's bullet pointed those for me. Um, I've put things on there like extracurricular activity. So these are awards that are not necessarily academic, but they are things that would be useful to an employer to know. So I put on here that I'm a member of the scouts that i've got a provisional driving license i've got my duke of edinburgh's bronze award so you can select all of those from our pre-selections here you just have a look in here and see if there's anything there that you've got and they are examples as well so as i say if you've got anything else you want to add just click on add activity and pop another one in there anyway so this cv has been completed once they're all blue you can click on review and print uh preview and print i should say and as you can see now it's previewing the pdf document for you and what you can do are various things like change the font uh, you can say you want the headings and the line breaks to be different colours. Or you can select a different template just to see what that looks like. Pick the one you like and then proceed to the next section. This is your final preview. Now, because we said we're a student 
at the beginning, there is an extra link on this page, which I'm just going to try and highlight for you here. Now, if you click on that link, that will take you to extra information for students, including your options at 16 and 18 and travel in the local area and all that sort of thing. And if you said you're a job seeker, that link would take you to additional job seeker uh, information as well. So do check that out if you want to. But you've got your final preview here. If you're happy with that, all you need to do is click on the download button and you should see in a moment we've downloaded a PDF now, which I'm going to have a look at. And this is our CV. So it's been formatted. You know, the bits that should be bullet pointed are bullet pointed. The personal statement has gone in at the top. Your subjects have been listed and whether they were predicted or awarded, that kind of thing. Uh, and all the other elements have been listed as well. So that CV is all done. Um, so that's, that's ready to go. And you could attach it to an email or an application process, whatever you whatever you want to do. So I'm going to get rid of that now. Um, if we go back to the hub page here, uh, back here, you can see that that's all waiting to be changed. If you want to edit it, um, you need to edit it in the system and then publish a new one. Obviously, you can't edit a, a PDF particularly easily. Um, that is on purpose. The reason why we've chosen PDF is because a, it's difficult for anyone else to fiddle with that once you've sent it away. And also, we can be fairly sure of the format of a PDF when it's produced. So it's a good way of making sure that you, everything stays in line. So that's why we use the PDF format. As I say, if you want to edit that, that CV, then do come back into the system and then just publish a new one. So I'm going to go back there and you can see we're now managing two CVs um, and we can continue to work on those or create new ones. So that is the CV builder in a nutshell. It will help you build a CV from scratch pretty quickly. It will help you build a personal statement example from scratch pretty quickly. It will prompt you for what to put in in terms of your skills and attributes and your hobbies and all that sort of thing. So do check it out. Get it, get, get a CV up and running and then make sure that you customize it to make it your own. But hopefully you'll find that a, a useful tool. Um, do look out for some of our other videos. We've got one coming on the I can be a main website and uh, how to use the careers wizard and think about what sort of jobs you want to do. But for the time being, have fun with the CV wizard and uh, thanks for listening.